Hey everybody, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to introduce you to the extension called Flask Caching. So caching is pretty simple. What caching is, is you have a function, let's say you have a function that takes a long time to run or it's expensive to run and it returns some kind of result. Caching simply means you take that result and you save it somewhere. So when someone comes to run the function again or your app runs the function again, it's gonna pull the answer out of the storage instead of actually running the function again. Because the function takes so long to run, there's no need to run it if the result doesn't change within a short time period, usually measured within minutes. So Flask caching simply adds this functionality to your Flask app, and I'll show you how to use it in this video. It's pretty simple to use. Okay, so let's go to the code. I already have the basics of a very simple Flask app set up. Now I need to make sure I have Flask caching installed. So pip install Flask caching and I already have it installed on my system. And then you can import it. So from Flask, caching, import cache, and then I'll instantiate it. And then I'll initialize the app on the object. So cache.init underscore app, and I'll pass an app just like this. And before I can use it, I need to set one configuration value. So this is called cache type. And if I go back to the documentation, I'll show you a list of the different cache types that are supported. So here, so by default, it's null, which means there's no cache. And what I'll be using in this video is the simple cache. So the simple cache is simply a Python dictionary in memory. So the way that any cache works, it's like a key value store. So the key is going to be like something about your function, like the name of the function. And then the value is going to be the result of that function. So in the case of simple cache, there's going to be a Python dictionary in memory. The key is going to be something that is unique about the actual function itself, like the name. And the value is going to be whatever that function has returned uh, when it was executed before being stored in the cache. But you don't need to use this and you wouldn't use the simple cache in a real app. It's just really easy to use for demonstration purposes. They also have things like the file system cache, they have Redis, they have memcache. So it just depends on your needs and what you're willing to set up but how the app works will be ex exactly the same in each case. So I'll just focus on the simple one in my case. And if you wanna switch it out for something else, your code should work exactly the same. So I'll go ahead and put simple here. And then to use it, you can use it on your view functions. So to use it, you simply have a decorator that goes in between your route decorator and the actual declaration of the function. So you take the cache object and you're gonna call the cached method on it and then you can pass a timeout to it and this timeout tells flash caching how long to store that value inside the cache so for demonstration purposes I'll use 10 seconds so before I even actually execute the cache I want to give you a demonstration so from random import rand int so what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a random number inside of this route so uh, we'll say rand num equals rand int and we'll say a number between one and a thousand. And I'll just return the result of this. So I'll say the number is, and then it's going to be rand num. And then I need the closing header tags and I'll just return this. So when I go to run this, we should see a different number each time we refresh the page because it should generate a random number each time, every time it hits the route. So flask run. So now I'll go to the index and refresh and we see the number is 10. I'll refresh again, 736. And if I just keep hitting refresh, I'm just hitting F5 on my keyboard. We get a different number every single time. So this is not cached because the function is being executed every single time the page refreshes. Now, if I want to save the result of the function, which is just the HTML that gets returned, I can use the decorator, cache.cache. .cache. And the timeout is 10 seconds. Well, I may get five seconds. So what this means is that I'll run the function the first time and it's going to generate the random number and it's going to return this string here. Then it's going to save this string inside of the cache and then for the next five seconds, anytime someone goes to the same page, it's going to pull the string out of the cache instead of running the function again. And then after the five seconds is up, it's going to run the function again and then save it in the cache again. So let's see. So 98 and I'm gonna hit refresh now. I get 362, 
and now I'm hitting refresh. I'm just constantly hitting refresh, F5, F5, and it just changed to 456. And I'm still hitting refresh. Maybe you can see it like blinking now at the bottom. Now it's 180, and you can see at the top here, I'm just refreshing. And for five seconds, it just keeps returning that same value. So imagine that this function takes like 30 seconds to run on the first run, but then you save the result in the cache, then anyone who comes after the first run, it's going to be like an instant response instead of 30 seconds because the result is being pulled out of a data store instead of being generated uh, every time the function is run. So you can do this with our routes in Flask. It's pretty easy, like I just showed you here. You can also do it with uh, regular functions. So I'll create a function here. I'll, I'll call this calculate. So calculate, and it's going to return a number. So it's going to return uh, some number, and I'll get this number here. It's just going to be a random number again. So number equals rand int. This time, I'll make it between you know, 5 and 10. So it's going to be one of only five numbers, and it's, it's going to return that number here. And I'll create a separate route for this. So app route, uh, we'll call this number, and then number here. And then what I want to do is I want to return, uh, let's say this. So number, it's going to look pretty similar to the index route. So number is going to be equal to uh, calculate, and then it's going to return pretty much the same thing. So I'll just copy this and just replace random num with number. So no cache on the actual route function here. The cache is going to go here on calculate. So before I put the cache, um, I'll run it so you can see it working. So I'll go to slash number, and we see seven, nine, five, seven. And some should repeat given we're only getting a random number between five and 10, but generally you see the number is changing. So really the only difference between using the cache with a route and a regular function is this. So if I go to the documentation, I'll show you. There's this thing called the key prefix. So by default in Flask, when you're using Flask caching, it knows that your U function is you know, part of a route. So it has an app.route decorator on it. So it uses information about the function that it got from Flask uh, to create the key in the data store. Whereas this function, like there's nothing Flask related about it. So if I wanna use the cache, I have to set my own key prefix. So to do that, I will say uh, cache dot cache timeout. We'll make that five seconds again. And then I need the key uh, prefix and I'll just call this calculate. Right? So now with the key prefix, it can store something like calculate in the data store so it can retrieve the value from the cache every time I need it. So I'll save that and we'll go ahead and try. Now I'll refresh, I get nine and I'm refreshing the page. And after five seconds, it should change unless I just happen to get nine again. So let's see if it changes after a little bit. And we see I'm refreshing, but the number changes slowly because after five seconds, it generates it again. Perhaps between five and 10 wasn't a good example because it can return the same thing over and over. If you change this to 100, it should be a little more clear. So 10, 72, and I'll just keep hitting refresh, and then it should change. It'd be unlikely to be 72 again. So it's 7, and so on. So we see this is working exactly the same as the one before. So there's one last thing I want to talk about, and that's called memoization. So memoization is caching with one additional step. So in addition to saving the result of a function, you're going to save the actual arguments to the function as well. So it's going to associate the name of the function and the arguments with something inside the cache. So to use this, if you go to the documentation, you just call the uh, memoize method on cache, and then you can pass in a timeout as well. So uh, what I'll do here is, let's say cache uh, memoize timeout. It's going to be five seconds. And then it needs a key prefix. And I'll call this um, you know, sleep. Because what I'm going to do in this is sleep for. And I'm going to sleep for, let's say, in seconds. So in is the 
parameter that I can pass in a different argument for end. I'm going to bring in the sleep function. So from time import sleep. And then in here, I'll just call sleep in. And I'll return done. So the return value isn't really important in this example. What I want to focus on is how long it sleeps for. So what I'll do is I will create one more route. We'll call this sleep. And it's going to take in a value. So int uh, in. And then sleep in. And I'll pass this to sleep. Um, this should be sleep. Let's say sleep get. So sleep for is the name of the function that I created down here. And I want to sleep for those in seconds. And I'll return uh, done, done sleeping. And I need the closing h1 tag. So now when I run this, if I call it for, let's say, 5, it's going to sleep for 5 seconds. Now if I call it again with 5, it's going to go to the cache and get the result. Because it's not only looking for the sleep for a function, it's going to be looking for the value that I passed in 5. If I change that value to something else, like 6, it's going to run the function again, and then it's going to save the result to the cache. So if I call uh, sleep for 6 seconds again, then it's going to get it from the cache. So let's uh, take a look at this. So slash sleep, and I need to pass in a value. So I'll sleep for 3 seconds. And key prefix is not necessary. or this kind of function. So one, two, three, and it's done. If I do it again, it returns immediately. And then one, two, three, done, and it returns. So because the sleep takes so long, you know, if we make the timeout longer, 30 seconds, uh, what I can do is sleep for three seconds. So one, two, three is done. And now if I call this within you know 30 seconds, it returns immediately. But if I change this to five, sleep for five seconds. So four, five, and it should be done. And it's done now. If I call it again, it immediately reloads the page because it's pulling from the cache. So those are the simple cases of using a Flask caching. The idea is very simple. It's basically just putting a decorator on the functions that you want cache, and then Flash caching will do everything else. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.